Hello and welcome everybody, this is Adam the City Host and this is Chicken Police. New episode where we are back at the Tsar Club. So let's see what we can do here. We have Archie and the henchman. Uh, Filmar, let's see what can Hey do. old bird, what are you waiting for out here <coughs> in the rain? Is that you, boys? I'm a little uh, tired. <laughs> I can see that, Val. Oh, it's all right. I just can't find my car. I don't see very well in the rain. It's my eyesight's pretty bad. I should wear glasses. <laughs> Imagine that. A hawk wearing glasses. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. There ain't <laughs> nothing funny about it, Snowflake. Oh, all right. Sorry. <clears throat> Have you seen uh, Natasha or Ibn since we left? Ibn? The East got put off a long time ago. Natasha? I haven't seen her. Thanks anyway, pal. Uh, good luck with finding your car. You uh, want some help? Could be that I didn't come here by car. What do you think, Sonny? Your old friend? Well, I wouldn't know that, Phil, but uh, you take care, all right? Ah, uh, you're telling me? <laughs> oh, that's funny. Sonny, pal, listen. Tell me, Phil. I like you. Really, I do. So listen here. Whatever happens, yeah? Whatever happens, never fall in love with that woman. <laughs> you mean Natasha? Who else would I mean, bird brain? Okay, okay, At Phil. This point, I promise. There is no character who <sighs> ever like told hell. our hero that he shouldn't fall in love with Natasha. So, <laughs> like we have some new information. Yeah, my biggest problem is that it says that one new information, but I actually have to uh, find it. Pretty sure that it's personal information, so anyway, nothing uh, entrance so I can get in, but let's check with Archie. Hey boys, tell me, is Natasha still inside? I can't give you any information about that gentleman. I'm sorry. Ah, the regulations. I know. We've gotten used to it. I am glad to hear that. And your boss, Wessler? Can we find him in the VIP lounge? I'm afraid I can't tell you that either. But we can take a look for ourselves, right? No problem, gentlemen. Thanks, <laughs> Wooly. <laughs> Your friend's not the talkative type, is he? He understands what we're saying, right? Don't anger me, chicken, or I'll tear <laughs> out your throat before you could say hemp seed. <laughs> <laughs> Just try, Fleabag. Hey, folks, relax. The night's still young. We'll have plenty of time to tear each other's throats out, but right now we're busy. Ha! Huh. You're right. Bye, guys. Goodbye, gentlemen. Archibald is the nicest character, I swear. <laughs> okay, let's check inside. Oh, whoa, what was that? Big buck. Clicked on Big Buck and got out. Oh, Llama Lady. These guys are running around. Oh, let's check. Hello again, Bojack. <sighs> Please don't call me that, sir. You're right. I'm sorry. Uh, what's your name again? Well, if you really must know, I'm Lance, sir. Okay, Lance. Listen, it's very important. Oh, please, sir. Don't get me involved in anything. I just want to get my shift over with and go home to sleep. Relax, there won't be a problem. Just answer the questions honestly. Ugh, if I must, let's give it a try. <laughs> right, kid. Lance. Huh, Lance, yeah. So, have you seen Natasha since her performance? No, oh, no, don't ask me anything about Miss Kitsenko and Mr. Westler. It could cost me my job, or even more. Hey, it's a matter of national security. It could be. Yeah, see, it could be. So, if you help, you won't only be helping us, but the Crown and the whole city of Clawville. <sighs> oh, okay, all right, just stop that chicken shit, will ya? 
I saw Natasha, yeah. She came down, spoke with someone, then stormed out the front door. And then what happened? She came right back in, two or three minutes later, soaked to the bone. She was in a hurry. She went up to her suite, then came back down and left. And you haven't seen her since? I genuinely haven't seen her ever since, sir. Thanks, Lance. You've been a great help. I'm happy to hear that. So Natasha had left. Seems so. But she never arrived at the weekend house. True. Then? Then we'll stay with the original plan. We'll gather our thoughts at the office and go over everything we know. Okay, Bossbird. Lead the way. If anyone asks, Lance, we were never here. Sure, sir. This guy was here before, right? He's handling it pretty well. And there are even more pretty dames all over him. You think they dig his antlers that much? More like his wallet, Marty. Probably. <laughs> you think the guy's taking a shine to Olivia now? Why should I care? And while we're at it, why do you care? Me? <laughs> I, I don't care at all. Uh -huh. And why do you ask? What? Stop Some bugging me. Are so obvious. We asked her. So we meet again. How unpleasant. I'm sorry, She's Olivia. Honest. We won't keep you long. Perhaps you could tell us if you've seen Natasha. She hired you and you already lost sight of her? That's unfortunate. We should have met her, but she didn't show up. Should we be worried? Are you asking me that? I haven't seen her since she was on stage. Not like I was paying any attention to her or anything. Thanks, sweetheart. We won't bother you anymore. Thanks, Olivia. Don't mention it. Okay, nothing really here or so. What else could we do? So, hotel, that's the target. New stand, PD. I don't want to go to the PD, I was just there, so. Ah. I mean, why can I click on this? Why do I have to come down here? I mean, the controls are not so not straightforward. I mean, uh. Yeah. That's we have no much choice my only but to continue the, the investigation where it started. In that shady little apartment I called home. The only lead was the list Fillmore gave us, with all those imposing names on it. But what could it mean? And why did Natasha keep it secret from us? But most importantly, what did all this have to do with Deborah's death? The trail started to get cold. And so did the air outside. There was something unsettling in the black clouds, hiding all the stars. I prayed that they didn't bring an early snowfall. The night was already painful enough. Why? So, what are we doing here? Trying to calm down. I'll have a shot. Sure you will. And we're trying to put the pieces together, of course. Figure out what's next. And what is next, Boss Bird? Let's take a look at what we've learned so far. So, how did this whole case start? Before we do that, question, why would somebody kill Debbie? I mean, what's the point? I mean, it's like sending a message. Most probably. Otherwise, why? Anyway, let's see what we have to do here. What do I cruise? Possible suspects. Well, <laughs> yeah, it's possible suspects. So, uh, how did the case start? I really 
really don't know what to do here. I honestly don't know what to do here. And uh, that annoys me. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. suspect <sighs> oh <sighs> I mean seriously Natasha and the frets but what's the connection? Yeah. yeah, the threats are meant for Natasha, no doubt about that. Thing Natasha didn't speak about. Natasha is terrified, and she's in real danger. But she kept this list hidden from us. It seems too important to keep it a secret. list. I know only one person who moves in circles high enough to know where it's from. Lewis. We must ask him if we want to get out of this dead end. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? So, the card is... Uh, Ah, oh, maybe a dead end. The piece of painting, too. But the list Filmar gave us... 
Exactly. Full of those imposing names. And I only know one person who moves in similar circles. Lamar. Yes, Marty. It's Lewis. Exactly. Of course, it's Lewis. But where do we find the bunny man? Well, since he owns this building, I'm hoping he's here. It's worth a call. You know his number? By heart. 555-932. I wrote it down in my notebook as well. Oh, you are a professional, boss bird. If there are books in the world... Hey, Lewis, uh, sorry to disturb you, again. Uh, could you come over to my place? I, uh, have a question for you. It's very important. It's about a case. A real case? With the chicken police? Of course, Sonny. I'll be over in a few minutes. Thanks, pal. I owe you one. Why? <laughs> Just a minute. Yeah, he's actually one. <laughs> Thanks, Lewis. Again. Oh, don't m m mention it. Besides, it was my big dream to help you with a serious case. Well, let's hope you can help. What can you tell me about this list, old pal? Hmm. Well, well, these names. I know ha half of them personally. Maybe even more. I knew it. But I have no idea what kind of list this is. Here we go. But these are all members of the upper c c class. Politicians, business people, oh my. <clears throat> Even the commander of the r Royal Guard. Damn. But I really don't know what it m means. So, is it a dead end? I'm a afraid so. Ooh, we can ask. Deborah, the girl who came to me tonight. Yes, she's a very lovely young lady. Where did you take her after you two left? Where she asked me to. To Flowerville. Flowerville? Rochester Street 37? Yes, exactly. Why? Luck. <gasps> did something happen? Nothing good, Lewis. Nothing good. This? This? Oh, 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 my goodness. I think we have a bingo, gentlemen. You s s see, I also have one of these. A card? Like this? Really? Y yes. It's a membership card to a very exclusive club. How exclusive? Very. That's what I'm talking about. What does S.N. mean, Lewis? It's the s s s sweltering Nile. But hmm? that's a... Well, yes, it's a brothel. But it's not, not like that. It's th 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 something completely different. Calm down, Lewis. We're not going to tell anybody. Thank you s s so much. <laughs> it is rather embarrassing. Going to Listen, Lewis. How do we get in? You? Want to get in? Well, if you... Show them this card. They'll sh sh surely let you in, but it will be obvious you're not regulars there. We're used to that. So, are we going to a luxury brothel? Correct, Marty. Thanks for the help, Lewis. I owe you one. For the third time today, I think. At least. I don't know what you s s s said to him, but after you finished, he almost immediately van, van disappeared. Really? That's suspicious. Or he had business elsewhere. It's New Year's Eve. Everybody's going somewhere. I didn't see... I didn't see her after the show. If I'm not mistaken, she usually leaves when everyone else has already left. What else do you know about her, Lewis? Oh, not much. What everybody knows, she was a dancer then a backing singer then st star and then club owner we found out as much already 
Do you think she'd fled the Stavonian massacre? That's why the secrecy. Do you mean the massacre of the royal f family? I'd say her accent is a dead g g giveaway, and her name too, though it's undoubtedly an alias. So it's possible that she is a part of the royal family? I d d d don't think so. Nobody could have survived that hor hor awful night. Uh, you're probably right. What should we know about the place, Lewis? Besides what they're uh, dealing in there? No, oh, it's an elegant and exclusive place. Not everybody visits them for, for, for that, you know. Some animals just go for c c company. Mm -hmm. I see. I guess it's mostly visited by the upper class. M mostly, y yes. The wealthy who have a taste. Yes, of course. Is it true what they say, that it's some kind of hidden stronghold of the royalists? The Nile is a proud herald of the coexistence of all the sp species, yes, but stronghold? I don't think so. But the place must be an eyesore for the separatists, right? Oh, don't, don't, don't worry for the girls, Sonny. They can defend themselves quite well. The s s separatists wouldn't dare to go near the place. Well, we'll see what they have to say about these two old cocks. Uh, that was a little bit, um, equivocal. <laughs> yep. May I ask what you have gotten yourself into? This looks s s s serious. It's complicated, Lewis. But nothing good, I can tell you that much. Ah, is there a a a anything else that I can help you with? Maybe there's something. There's always something. Look, uh, I'm sorry I dragged you into this, Marty. Ah, don't be. I would have been bored to death, still be on that shooting range. And Laura, what about her? She's used to it. Every New Year's the same. You know, since that special one. Don't say it. A bloody New Year's. Yeah. So, Laura's probably at home, waiting for me on the couch, staring into a candle and killing a bottle of wine. Or two. That's you can get sad. out of this any time. You know that, don't you? If you start something, finish it, right? Let's just make it through alive, okay? Or Laura will bite off my head. Literally. I'm on it, partner. And 21 days until retirement, then to infinity and beyond. Nothing interesting. To Marty's delight, we were heading toward the most exclusive brothel in Clawville. The separatists and those opposing the monarchy hated the place just like they hated everything that supported interracial relations and peaceful coexistence of all species. So the place wasn't just a brothel, it was a symbol. But just like a brothel is not a worthy symbol, Clawville failed to turn out the way it was intended. Well, here we are. The kingdom of long legs, silky skin, and fluttering lashes. We've arrived. Calm down, Marty. Watch your blood pressure. Oh. Well, hello, ladies. <laughs> Dog dame, man. lady, bird fella, receptionist, fox lady. Oh. 
Holy fur. You swallowed so hard, the whole place shook. Are you <laughs> kidding me? I've never seen anything like this before. Is this even legal? Why wouldn't it be? I don't know. Vice? You really must be joking. Vice? In Clawville? Uh, okay, okay, I was pulling your leg. But still, it's a little hot in here. Now well, cool down, Marty. Don't even look over there. Remember Laura, your wonderful girlfriend, whom you love more than anything. Isn't she you don't need to tell me. All I'm thinking about is her. With a hatchet in her hand. More like my nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> That's... <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, Laura, 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 Laura. That's it, Marty. Indeed. Just slowly turn away from the pictures. Uh, I should do that too. Uh. Excuse me, gentlemen. Would you be so kind as to help me? With pleasure, ma'am. The zipper always comes down on my dress. Would you kindly zip it back up? Can I, Sonny? What am I, your mother? <laughs> do what you want, for God's sake. Happy to help, ma'am. Oh, what a gallant young man. Pluckin' lords. Yeah. Oh, thank you, honey. Marty, ma'am. Marty McChicken. Thank you, darling Marty. I'm much obliged. Anytime, ma'am. Anytime. <laughs> May I invite you gentlemen for a drink, perhaps? No, thank you. We're in a hurry. Oh. <laughs> These brides are elegant. Just like Laszlo said. Lewis. What do you think could be the old rabbit's type? Fluffy tails? Furry ears? A raspy tongue? Oh, for the love of all the gods, stop it. But just think about it. Please shut up, Marty. She's what I call an exotic beauty. Well, that's one way to put it. Hey, every <laughs> animal's the most beautiful thing in the world to someone. Yeah, True. you're right. Oof, I don't know about you, but I go weak in the knees for stripes. Please, Marty, I don't want to know. And I don't care. Keep it to yourself. And let's get out of here quickly. Can't I even talk to you anymore? You can. Ask about the weather, or how's my lower back. Those two are even connected, if you want to know. <laughs> yeah, old fart. Yeah, that... Yee, that guy's stare gives me the creeps. Yeah, I can see why. I've always told myself that birds are weird. What did you just say? Huh? What? <laughs> Me? Nothing. <laughs> okay, let's... I... I don't even know... Good gods! Hey, keep it down, Marty. I see it now. Of all that's furry. Yes, it's very furry. I... I don't even know... Good gods! Hey, keep it down, Marty. I see it now. Of all that's furry. Yes, it's very furry. Or more like, uh, shaggy. These <laughs> oh, <that's> jokes. <laughs> My name is Day Night Diamond. Welcome to the sweltering Nile, gentlemen. Miss Diamond, I'm Sonny, and this is my partner, Marty. If I may, miss, you have a beautiful name and exceptionally wonderful stripes. Agreed. Marty, not now. Oh, thank you very much. Please excuse him. He doesn't voice. visit places like this very often. Uh, me neither, uh, to be honest. Oh, nothing to worry about, gentlemen. There's a first time for everyone. You're absolutely right. We're just interested in a certain lady called Deborah. Deborah? We don't have any employees by that name right now, but if you want, any of our girls would love to be Deborah for a night. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, excuse me, you misunderstand. Uh, she doesn't work here. 
I'm afraid I don't follow. It's kind of confusing, but let me try to explain. Please, I'm at your service. I'll gladly answer any of your questions. You hear that, Sonny? Any questions? <laughs> Shut up, Marty. Marty's really like the horny kid. Yeah, let's not start with the police badge. Have you been working here long, miss? Almost five years, sir. And do you like your job? Very much so. I think it's only worth doing anything if you honestly enjoy it. You hear that, Sonny? You should take that advice. Yep. I'm on it, Marty. I'm trying to get myself fired, if you haven't noticed. Yeah, and me too. Collateral damage. <laughs> Do you know a gentleman named Lewis C. Hayworth? Of course I do. Mr. Hayworth is a regular guest at our establishment. Oh. I see. Uh, how regular, if I may ask? I can't give you any information about that. House policy. But she we can have tell that too. That it's called the law, ma'am. Mm. If you have any questions of that nature, please come back with a warrant. Ah, uh, touche. I, I mean, seriously, she is not telling any private information, but she is uh, confirmed that uh, one of he, her customers is going there. I mean, <laughs> that's just dumb. Maybe I should have started with the police bench. Does this list mean anything to you? This? I'm not sure. No, nothing. Don't you see some familiar names on there? I do, but everybody knows those animals. Personally, I have no contact with any of them. I see. Oh, thank you. Look, she gave this to us. The girl named Deborah, the one we uh, asked you about. I see. Do you know what this is? Of course. It's a membership card. Was this person a regular here? If this belonged to her, then yes. I can check for you. Please, the ladies will entertain you while you wait. I'll be mm. right back. Uh, thank you. I'm much obliged. Invite you gentlemen for a drink? No, thank you. We're oh. <laughs> Probably a courtesan. <laughs> Well, she looks lovely, that's for sure. How are we doing? Uh, wow, there are lots of scenes ahead. <laughs> Most of the achievements. Lady. I apologize for the wait. Oh. Please, come with me, gentlemen. So you were successful. My mistress, Madame Zavas, would like to meet you. You mean that, Madame Zavas? As far as I know, there's only one of her, so yes. Please, miss, take us to her. With pleasure. Madame Zavas was a legend in Clawville. Her name was known all over the wilderness. She's an avid royalist, former member of the Council of Twelve, spy master, assassin, businesswoman, and courtesan. To be honest, I didn't even know she was still alive. She's no spring chicken, that's for sure. She could also be my mother, or maybe my grandmother. First Ibn Wessler, now her. 
Honestly, tonight it wouldn't surprise me if His Majesty Hector the Third didn't grace me with his presence. <laughs> Probably we will get there at this rate. Those look really nice. That clock. Picture of a uh, kind of book. Yeah, let's look around first. Interesting pieces. Do you think so? It's the art of my people. Uh, crocodiles? There are many kinds of crocodile in the wilderness, Mr. Featherland. This is the art of the Nilanites. Ah, hence the name, the Sweltering Nile. It's a river, Mr. Featherland. My ancestors lived by this river a long time ago. Ah, interesting. Thank yep. you. Beautiful pieces for sure. Is that the time already? Have you noticed your clock's not working? How observant you are. That clock isn't meant to show the time. It's a decoration. A memento. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Indeed. Quarter to twelve. There's something weird about that clock. Mm -hmm. Let's memorize that. Quarter to twelve. What else do we have here? What a painting! Congratulations, ma'am. Marty. Yes. <laughs> it's beautiful indeed. It's more than 40 years old. You know, I was considered pretty then. Oh, don't say that. You still look great, ma'am. Thank you. It feels good, but no. There's no need for lies. Those days are long gone. Every age has its truth and its beauty. True. For me, beauty is not in the looks anymore. I agree, ma'am. Yes. This is the Zevas from the legends. There are books here on quite a variety of topics. There are books here on quite a variety of topics. Slime and punch. There are books here on quite a variety of topics. There are books here. There are books here. There are books here. Okay, it seems that... Hmm, somebody's missing there. There are four, so at least five people left. Okay. Uh, let me introduce myself properly, ma'am. Mr. Zadino, I know who you are. And I also know your partner. The legend of the chicken police is always one step ahead of the chicken police. <laughs> uh, thank you. That's flattering. Not hmm. really. <laughs> May I ask what you are looking for exactly? Here, on this night? You know, that's an interesting question. The card we've shown your lovely colleague... ...belongs to an old friend of ours, whom we haven't seen for a long time here. And the name? Unfortunately, no, Mr. Santino. That's confidential information. In my line of work, discretion is everything. Well, you know, in our line of work... The law is above everything. Oh, do you think so? I could tell you what your colleagues think is also above everything. But, as I said, discretion. 
Look, ma'am, we don't want to impose. We're conducting a private investigation, which started off as harmless, but now it's murder. That sounds serious. It is serious. <laughs> That's why we'd be grateful for your help. In that case, I'm at your service. Ask your questions, and I'm going to answer to the best of my knowledge. As long as you're not wading through muddy waters. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, I swim very well for a chicken. I swim well, too. Yeah, she probably swims much, much better. Uh... As I was saying, it belongs to us. Only our most valuable guests have one of these. And our employees, of course. The employees, too. Good to know. Can you tell me if this card belonged to a guest or an employee? No. I thought so. Yes, thank you. Lewis Hayworth is a good friend of mine. It uh, surprises me that he's a regular here. You wouldn't believe our clientele. You would be shocked. No doubt. Lewis, uh, does he come here often? Mm, not so often. Thank you for the vague answer, ma'am. The mystery is thrilling. The thrill is life yeah, itself. Yeah, I mean, description, that was description, beautiful, man. when it comes to the rabbit, Louis, uh, it seems that uh, they are not really discreet about him. Tell me, have you ever seen this list? I have. Am I right to what? assume it has something to do with the sweltering Nile? It does, yes. But I can't tell you more about it. No. Discretion is key. Absolutely. Precisely. Do you know Natasha Katsenko personally? Yes, I do. Tell me about her. Warm-hearted. Protective. Quick-tempered. Fierce. Yes. Fierce. Thank you. Very useful. This place isn't just our home with the girls. It's a sanctuary. Really? Uh, how? It symbolizes why the city was founded almost a thousand years ago. Unity. Love. Freedom. Interbreeding? That too, yes. Do you have a problem with that? Oh, don't get me wrong. I don't. My girlfriend's a predator. Really? really? I'm glad to hear it. Now I am curious about the uh, girlfriend. Oh, I can question her. Deceit is everything to save us. She used to be a spy, so I'm going to take her every word with a grain of salt. Mm, this won't be easy. Who's behind the legend, Miss Zavas? Who are you, really? Just an animal raised to survive, Mr. Featherland. And because I've been taught, I know how to survive. I always was what I had to be. And you managed to dodge my question. Clever. Yes. Well, you see, this is one of the typical elements of survival. The way of dodging a delicate question and still making the questioner believe he got the answer. <laughs> But you're too cunning and experienced, aren't you? That's pretty much what every single person <laughs> You're not an does. easy one to fool. I'm trying to maintain appearances, ma'am. You should. Appearances, most of the time, are stronger and more dangerous than the truth. Isn't it dangerous being a royalist nowadays? You know, Mr. Featherland, those that are genuinely dedicated never care about danger. That's something you must know even better than I. Do you think it's my loyalty that motivates me the most? If you do, I'm sorry to disappoint you. Maybe you're not loyal to the police, Mr. Featherland, but you are to your own principles and ideals. Am I right? That's true, but you're avoiding the question. 
Why did you stay in the king's employment after the scandals that are making half the city riot? What makes you still believe so much in the institution of monarchy? You know, I always adapt, but only to a degree where I still don't have to give up myself and my ideals for the sake of survival. You'd rather so die, safe. then. Maybe it would seem too dramatic or even romantic to you, but yes, exactly. I'm sorry to doubt you, but I've always thought your kind was rather compromised. Do you mean spies or crocodiles? Spies, of course. <laughs> I must disappoint you. But there aren't many groups as loyal and unwavering as the spies, Mr. Featherland. If you're telling me, ma'am, I believe you. What is the sweltering Nile? Is it really just a luxury brothel? First of all, it's what it looks like. Luxurious relaxation with the luxurious ladies and gentlemen. For wealthy ladies and gentlemen with luxurious needs. And under the surface? If you're insinuating that my girls are kind of spies, you're on the wrong track. On a very wrong track, to be precise. Don't they have confidential information on almost all the wealthy bachelors of Clavio? Bachelors? <laughs> Don't be naive. Almost exclusively married men visit here. <laughs> well, then my question is even more valid. Of course, they know much. Many visit here who don't care about sex, Mr. Featherland. Some come here to talk. And meanwhile, they inadvertently say a lot about themselves. Which makes them easy targets for blackmail, right? It could, yes. But even the assumption is offensive. Oh. If I guess who the card belongs to, will you tell me? I wouldn't say that's an acceptable price for such a secret as this, but if you guess right, I won't lie to you. Then I will tell you you were right. Yes. Good. Let's see. The answer to my question, Natasha Katsenko. Well, Mr. Featherland, it seems the gossip about you is right. What gave it away? It couldn't have been easier. There's a beautiful woman with a mysterious past, trying to keep it a secret, while someone's threatening her with the exact same thing, leaving rather unmistakable messages behind. Plus, we found the card on Deborah, who was her best friend and confidant, so she was either trying to hide it or destroy it forever, so no one could find out the truth. Am I right so far? Indeed, Mr. Featherland. So, if I'm not mistaken, Natasha used to work for you, before she met Ibn Wessler. He fell in love with her, gave her a job at the Millions Club. The rest is history. You have talent, Mr. Featherland. I'm really sorry you're not working for the government. I am working for the government. I'm a cop. Are you sure, Mr. Featherland? Touché. Indeed. Natasha used to work here. We can put it that way, but you know, this isn't just a workplace. She also lived here. She was part of our family. And we still love her very much. Right. That puts everything in a different light. Savas is a true survivor, always was. And she's proud of that, even to this day. Maybe I can get her to trust me if I play to this part of her. You tried to protect her. From what? Natasha came to me penniless, cold to the bone, and wounded. 
She was only 17 years old. Even if she were my enemy, I would have taken her in until she recovered. Yes, I'm like that. I was raised to be like that. Haven't you seen any opportunities for profit? Or were you guided by pure animal goodness? Is that so hard for you to believe? I think that uh, worldly women like you try to turn every position to their advantage. I hope I don't offend you. On the contrary. <laughs> but no. I didn't see any opportunities in a girl who could barely speak our language, who was starving and wounded and obviously running from something. In fact, I was taking unnecessary risks because of her. taking a risk, yet you still took her in. Why? I don't know, Mr. Featherland. These things can't always be rationally explained. Not even when I've lived my whole life based on reason, on logic, almost every step calculated. So Natasha came and turned your whole life upside down. She's like that, isn't she? It's in her nature, yes. Poor thing can't help it. She's like a tornado. She usually takes everything with her. That's quite an apt metaphor. But I have to agree. Did she sweep you away, too? <laughs> I don't know yet, madam. I'm clinging firmly to the ground. Uh-huh. Well, look... Do you know where Natasha came from before Clawville? <laughs> Naturally. The poor dear couldn't even deny it. Even her name's eloquent, her accent, but mostly her manners, Mr. Featherland. She's from Stovos, and she belonged to the upper class of Stavonian social circles. She could barely even speak the language when I first met her. That's all you know about her. An ex-spy like you must have checked up on her new protege's past. That's the most exciting thing. Yes, I have. Multiple times putting my most treasured connections to good use. But nobody found anything. Natasha's trail could only be traced back to the Stavonian border. What happened in that country, no one knows. It's rather curious, curious don't you think? <laughs> it is, Mr. Featherland, oh, yes. My curious. My, no. That's why I've always been... Rather fond of Natasha. Did it touch you deeply when she left you? Indeed. <laughs> it did. Zavos is protective. It seems she's dedicating her whole life to her protégés. If I concentrate on that, maybe she'll open up to me. Have you kept in touch? Only occasionally, Mr. Featherland. She writes to me every few weeks, and very rarely we talk on the phone. But I haven't heard from her in weeks. The truth is I've started to worry about her. Did she give no sign of being in trouble? Never. No. Natasha's not the kind to talk about her feelings. Yeah, I've noticed that myself. When was the last time you saw her, Madame Zavas? Maybe around two months ago. There was a ball, attended by Ibn Wessler, his beautiful mate Natasha, and myself. Yes. Was she herself? Did you feel like she was afraid or worried about something? On the contrary, she was unrestrained, free, radiant. She was in love. Yes, 
in her own unique way. What do you mean? You know Natasha loves on a different level than most Clawville women. Or most women in the wilderness, in fact. Maybe it's because of the Stovonian origins. Perhaps it's something else. So you didn't notice anything strange about her? Well, if anything could be called strange, it was that I saw a woman positively floating above the ground, who previously used to stand on it with two feet. I see. Thank you, madam. How did you feel when you learned Natasha was going to leave? Honestly? I was very hurt. I loved her as a daughter. How would you have felt? I couldn't say. And I still couldn't stop her, and you know why? Of course I do. Because you loved her. You've been in my shoes before, am I right, Detective? Yes, I can feel you have. This yep. isn't about me, madam. Please stop changing the subject. I have felt betrayed on a certain level. Yes, and offended. And alone. Even amongst all my friends. Were you disappointed in her? Only in myself, Mr. Featherland. But I have a hunch you know this feeling very well. Yes, you're right. Well, thank you for your time, madam. Anytime, detective. Yes. Anytime. Please, gentlemen, wait here a moment. I would like to show you something that could help you. Oh, that's excellent news. Thank you. We will wait. Do you trust her? Not in the slightest. Even her smile is fake. This woman wallowed in other animals' secrets until she became one, too. That's exactly how I feel. Anyway, now that we're here, we can take a better look around. Just what I was thinking. Nothing interesting here. These books are here for... These books are here for a reason. They mean something. This is the Zevas from the legends, beautiful and deadly. Yeah, I am obviously supposed to do here something, but... What's that? 7491? A hidden door. Who'd have thought? She yeah. is a legendary ex-spy. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, this yeah. is something I've never understood. Why isn't a key good enough? I mean, you can take that with you. But riddles can be solved by anyone. True. I don't think many animals get to be in this room, Marty. And the other thing is... Maybe she wanted us to find it. Exactly what I'm thinking. Who knows? Anyway, we're going in. Secret door. Wow. I mean, it was obvious that the wrong clock had to be used for something and the books when I saw that there were numbers I just put the two things together so yeah I mean 
I am not good at riddles. I am horrible at riddles, and even I could solve this, so... Yeah. This room is not like her at all. The other must have been for show. Marty, this is the reality. We're talking about a professional spy. A former spy. Still, if anyone knows how to mask her real face, it's her. Well, you think this is who she really is? Cold, dark, and tiny. And full of secrets. Ah, royalist indeed. So what do we have here? Nothing there. Drawers. Strange book, pictures, typewriter, walls. Ugh, this place gives me the creeps. Me too. We better get out of here before she comes back. Ugh, this place gives me the creep. Pictures. Ladies of the Force. 872, now the air is 945, so... Wow. I mean... She's like... What? I mean, let's say that she's like 20 here. That would mean that she's like almost 100 years old. At least. Well, crocodiles live long. I don't know how long. But so the rumors are true. <laughs> Military intelligence. This dame's really something. I'm starting to think the whole brothel is just a cover. Of course it uh, is. Makes sense. You think she's still working for Royal Intelligence? Well, based on what she told us, she's a committed Royalist. So I imagine she does. Although a true spy would not leave such things like this just lying around. I mean, this would be the... F she, If she would be a real spy, this picture would not exist. Let's start with that. But If we fly too close... Anyway. Hector the Third. Our great and fair king. I feel sorry for the poor fox, to be honest. I don't. He has it pretty good. Would you like to live your life as a puppet? Everything you do, carefully planned. Your rule and authority. The whole thing, just for show. Even if he is just a puppet, Clawville needs a king. He gives strength and hope to many animals. <laughs> I guess... Well, I would say that it would depend on what kind of puppet uh, he has to be. I mean, is he a pu uh, puppet like the Queen of England, who has a luxurious, problem-free life? Um, she can do pretty much whatever she wants. Uh, I could live with that. We shouldn't cross the king. That would be beyond our pay grade. Uh, let's see what else do we have here. Yeah, because time is flying by. Unfinished letter. Separate Somebody started typing a letter but left it unfinished. What does it say? Number 2947222. Report about separatist group movements. Damn it. Don't even read that. What? Why not? I don't know about you, but I don't want to get caught up in the royalist separatist conflict. What you don't know can't hurt you, right? Uh, I can't even recognize you, boss. Where did you put your sense of adventure? My sense of adventure has retired. Leave it alone. <laughs> Just forget it's here, Sonny. Okay, so that's not important. We have the drawers and the strange book. Ah, names, numbers, dates. Oh, furry gods. Do you think they all belong to the brothel? Hell no. Half of it is a matter of national security. What did we step into? You know what? I don't care, Marty. I'm too old for conspiracies. The only thing that matters to me is to find out what the furry hell we're doing here. And what it has to do with Natasha. Sure. Yeah, I would like to know that. I don't want to know what's in them. Okay, so I think the last thing we can do is a strange book. Ah, oh, the missing page. Oh my. 
so this is basically that uh, what uh, ladies were having fun with which uh, persons Natasha Natasha oh she is in many places wait is that Molly that Molly the mm, the police lady Mary This has got to be it, Marty. Look at the missing page. Oh, gods. And look at the names. Yeah, the ladies and their guests. Exactly. Damn. What this means, Marty, is that the most influential people in the city had been Natasha's patrons. Some even from the royal family. This book could destabilize Clawville. At least the Clawville we currently know. You think this is behind everything? Somebody's blackmailing Natasha because of this? That could easily be the case. But something still doesn't fit. That piece of a painting. Sonny? If there's even a small chance of... Sonny! What? There's another familiar name here. What are you talking about? Augustus Bishop. Clucking hell, Sonny. Molly? She was working here too. Uh, it's probably someone else with the same name. So mm. that's why Natasha told me they'd known each other for <clears throat> a long time. Look, boss. I can't believe it. All those stories about her past. Listen, Bossberg. Molly loved you, right? Isn't that what matters? Marty, please shut your fucking oh, beak no, right I'm now, or I'll people. shut it for you. Okay, boss. I'm sorry, but... Just shut the cluck up. We've caught them sneaking around, Miss Diamond, you see? I see, madam. No, oh, back off, ladies. There's no need for this. We don't want trouble. No, maybe you don't. Unfortunately, trouble has found you, gentlemen. Madam Zavos, we needed to know the connection. What this place has to do with Natasha. And... And? And my wife. Filthy cops? He's talking gibberish. May I shoot him? No, not yet, Miss Diamond. I'd be very sorry to put holes in your lovely striped skin, but believe me, baby, I will. I've always wanted to know if diamonds are bulletproof. Please, madam? It'll all be over in a second. No. We have received different orders, Miss Diamond. Stand down. Oh, orders I see. The pony does tricks on command. Well, I'm not surprised. That's enough, Marty. You knew who she was, didn't you? What she meant to me. Well, well, Mr. Featherland. Aren't you interested in your case anymore? No? All it took was a name from your past, and your professionalism drowned in the mud. Stop playing games with me, Zavos. What does all this have to do with Molly? Nothing at all. No, she was just a little bird among the many who sought refuge here. You forced her into this! You'd love to hear that, but until she met you, she was one of us. Just another... You clucking... Sonny, no! I think I was dreaming. But it wasn't the kind of dream you'd want to remember. Dark and painful. Then, the suffocating smoke woke me. It wasn't fried eggs, that's for sure. Where was I? What happened? That treacherous crocodile. Then I saw Marty, who looked as horrible as I felt. 
Well, I've always wanted a romantic sea voyage. Things are getting God damn it! I knew I shouldn't have gone along with this. Marty, I told you you could get out any time. <laughs> and you knew damn well that I wouldn't. That I would never leave you in deep shit once I've joined you. You knew it, and you still asked me to do it. Marty, listen. You're a selfish bastard, Sonny. And you drag everyone around you down with you. How long was it till retirement? 120 days? 121. <laughs> but you just couldn't sit still on your ass, could you? Well, take a good look around, boss bird. This is you. And this is what follows you. Just this clucking misery and dead bodies. Do you understand? You have nothing else to offer. <sighs> Marty. And feeling sorry for yourself. Oh, you're great at that. I can't believe this sh Marty. What? I've almost managed to untie the knot. But if you keep thrashing around like that, we're really gonna die here. Ah, for cluck's sake. Fine. Work your magic. Until then, I'm gonna say all the prayers I know. You better. this many guns with me throw them away then never then they'll drag you down into the deep ah, I don't care I always thought your gun mania would be your undoing cluck you Sonny we have to survive this first well after you boss bird Clucking gods? Damn! Yeah. Listen, Marty. What? What you said on the ship. What? What about it? You were right. I knew this would happen. Or something like it. I dragged you into this deliberately. Because I'm not enough on my own. Sonny, cut the crap. No, I'm serious. I knew I couldn't do this alone. I needed you to... Well, to look out for me. I don't need this, all right? Stop playing the wounded soul. I don't fucking care. Fair enough. <laughs> You're right. Hell yeah, I'm fucking right. I'll, uh, shut up now. Good. So, uh, I think another hour passed, so we have to stop here and continue later at another episode. So, thank you for watching. If you like this video, now please like, share, subscribe, you know the drill. Thank you for being here. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Goodbye.